Today, I am looking for sirens. Now, these animals are especially interesting because the sirens actually lack hind limbs. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> My name is Jack, and for the past four years, I've traveled far and wide searching for the most interesting and unique organisms on the planet. Now, I've seen some fascinating things from armored pangolins to giant insects, and I'm always on the hunt for more strange creatures. Now today I'm searching for an unusual animal that you may have never heard of until now. The Eastern Lesser Siren. Now these may look like eels, but they're actually salamanders. That's right, these elongate and slimy sirens are amphibians and live their whole lives underwater. Let's learn about sirens. Okay, everybody, and welcome back to Jack's World of Wildlife. Now, today I am in the panhandle of Florida, and as I'm sure you can see, it's nighttime, so it's quite dark, but that's okay, because what we are searching for tonight is primarily active during the night, where they can poke and peruse through their murky, muddy, silty waters as they search for prey. Today, I am looking for sirens. Now, sirens are aquatic salamanders that live here in the southeastern United States. I'm specifically looking for the Eastern Lesser Siren. Now, these, in my opinion, are some of the most beautiful of the sirens, and they, I'm hoping we can get some cool ones with some nice olive kind of green patterns with some speckling as well. So we're going to poke around. We're going to check and see. There's tons of tadpoles, tons of crayfish, tons of fish and frogs. You can hear them all behind me. Uh, so there's lots and lots of food items for these animals. So we're going to poke around and we're going to see what we can find. Let's go. Now, sirens don't have the best eyesight, but many of their other senses are incredibly heightened. They can pick up the smallest vibration in the water and the tiniest of smells as they poke and prod their way through vegetation, through mud. So I have to be extra careful and extra sneaky if I'm gonna sneak up on one of these super cool and unique amphibians. Take a look, here's one right here. I just saw it bolt. You can see the tail. It's right there. Beautiful little Eastern Lesser Siren. Let's see if I can slowly kind of peel some of this away. It's probably gonna just bolt. The sediment's very soft. So these little sirens are able to really shuffle down it. Excuse me. Oh, he's like in a hole, I guess. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> See how lightning fast they are. Wow, that is crazy. Now, these animals are especially interesting because the sirens actually lack hind limbs. So they're actually only going to be kind of propelling themselves through the water with short front legs and a long tail equipped with a paddle-like fin. Uh, so these animals are kind of going to be crawling through. They're mostly going to be moving in an eel-like motion as they swim through the water uh, with the help of that powerful tail. But they're also able to kind of tuck in and poke around and look around through leaves and roots and things like that with those little feet. Now, although these animals are objectively aquatic, they can survive outside of water. Now, they, of course, can gulp air, but many, many individuals inhabit what are called ephemeral wetlands, which are wetlands that fill up at certain times of the year, but then will dry out when the hot summer months roll in. So how do these aquatic salamanders survive? Well, they have a really cool adaptation called estivation. 
Now what they do is they'll actually burrow into the soft mud once the water dries up and spin a cocoon of mucus. And they can stay and remain in this cocoon for up to and over a year while they wait for these wetlands to fill back up. Then once the rains roll in, these animals peel out of their mucus cocoon, crawl all the way back up, get back into the water column, and go about doing what these amazing salamanders always do in the first place. How cool of an adaptation is that? Now, these sirens are also equipped with beautiful gills. Now, they have these large gill-like structures that extend from the back of the head, and these are equipped with, with very thin skin layering over blood vessels. So these animals are able to pull oxygen directly out of the water. However, if you listen, you're not hearing any moving water, right? That's correct. We are in a kind of spring sink, so this is not just your, your fast flowing high oxygen water like we found the hellbenders in up in Northern Pennsylvania. No, these aquatic salamanders are also able to gulp air just like a lungfish or something like that. So they're able to also sequester oxygen and have to sequester oxygen through gulping air as well, which is an amazing adaptation to have when you live in some of these more stagnant and slow moving bodies of water. Now, with these feathery gills protruding from the back of the head, it is really easy to make the connection uh, with these animals and their close cousins, axolotls and mud puppies and things like that. It's very cool to see these structures in their prime in a healthy individual that's just pulling so much rich oxygen out of the water. Not to mention that these are super, super cute. I love looking at their funny, derpy little eyes and faces, uh, and they're just so funny to watch kind of snake through the water. Some of my all-time favorite salamanders to encounter while in the United States. Now, these animals, being aquatic amphibians that don't get too terribly large, have a plethora of predators. All sorts of things from large fish to other uh, amphiuma and sirens. Um, mud snakes are actually specialty feeders on these aquatic amphibians. So these animals have a variety of egrets and snakes and fish that are constantly trying to eat them at really at every stage of their lives, which is another reason why they kind of sneak out and slink out during the darker times of the night so that they're able to maybe have an extra little layer of protection from just some of those predators. Because like I said, they have specialty predators that are perfectly adapted to hunting them when they're out in their environment. So it's never a safe night if you're a siren. You gotta be watchful, you gotta be quick, and you gotta be able to tell who's friend from who's foe. So these animals are very quick, uh, we'll, we'll usually just get a glimpse of them kind of sh shooting away, so hopefully uh, we can get some amazing footage to show you all. Now, we were able to see quite a few of these gorgeous Eastern Lesser Sirens in this kind of limey spring sink, uh, which was super, super cool. This was a species I had actually never seen before. In fact, just last year is when I got my lifer uh, Western Lesser Siren. Uh, so that was super, super cool to be able to see uh, just another one of these amazing siren subspecies. Uh, and I really, really enjoyed my time poking around this awesome little area uh, to see these super cool salamanders. All right, well, we ended up being able to film a beautiful, beautiful Eastern Lesser Siren. That was super, super cool. Uh, that's one of the nicest sirens I've ever seen, and I'm sure it may be one of the nicest ones that you've ever seen at home, if you've ever seen a siren before. So I just wanted to tell you, my friends, that tonight, this time, I have to leave you. So... Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something about the beautiful Eastern Lesser Siren. I hope that your eyes were opened to the beauty that this creature encapsulates. So I leave you with this. Thank you, my friends, for watching. I enjoy your viewership, and I hope that I'm imparting some knowledge and some wisdom on you. So thank you for watching. Again, I keep saying that, but I am grateful that you're watching. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, of course. That helps support the video. That helps get the channel where it needs to go. Um, buy the merchandise. Join our channel memberships for exclusive behind-the-scenes content. 
Uh, and of course, turn on post notifications so you don't miss anything else because uh, we've got a lot of cool stuff coming this year. So be sure to stay tuned and uh, be sure to tune in next time. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.